Now this is a challenging problem from the look of it and actually from the working of it. We are asked to estimate the temperature above which a particular reaction becomes thermodynamically spontaneous. A thermodynamically spontaneous reaction means that the free energy of the reaction is less than zero. So we are going to estimate the temperature at which the free energy change of the reaction equals zero and above which it becomes negative. Well, how can we do that? Let's look at the defining equation for the free energy. And we see at once how we can make this estimation. If delta G zero is to become zero, then delta H zero equals T delta S zero and the temperature at which this occurs then is simply delta H zero over delta S zero. We make the assumption that delta H and delta S don't change much. with temperature. This is a valid assumption. It's a fair assumption. It will give us certainly an order of magnitude answer. So now we have to calculate the standard enthalpy change for this reaction and the standard entropy change for this reaction. Divide one by the other and that will give us the appropriate temperature. So let's do that. We will need data that we can get from our textbook or from a table of standard thermodynamic functions. The delta H for this reaction is twice the standard enthalpy of formation of NO gas minus the sum of the standard enthalpy of formation of N2 gas plus the standard enthalpy of forma formation delta H of O2 gas. Let's put some numbers into that. Equals twice 90.2 two five kJs per mole minus zero plus zero. The standard enthalpies of formation of nitrogen and oxygen, since these are elements in their standard states, are zero. Equals one eighty point five kJ. Delta S zero equals twice the standard entropy of NO minus the standard entropy of N2 plus the standard entropy of O2. And these are not zero. gases have real entropies equals tw twice 
240.1 J's minus 191.6 plus 205.1 J's over mole Kelvins, and that sum becomes 83.5 J's per mole Kelvin. Notice that while this is in J's, this is in KJ's. Never overlook that. It's important to keep your units consistent. So, T, the temperature at which our free energy function becomes zero, is 180.5 kJs times 10 cube j's per kJ, divided by 83.5 j's over k. We can, the moles cancel out. And if we do that division, we see that that becomes about 2.2 times 10 cubed k, or about 1900 degrees Celsius. Above that temperature, as we can see from the nature of the uh, materials involved, delta G will become negative. At that temperature, we estimate delta G equals zero. This is an interesting and important reaction. Two reasons. Number one, temperatures of this level are obtained briefly inside internal combustion engines when the explosion takes place, when the gasoline and the oxygen explode and nitrogen is present. So this is one of the major reasons why oxides of nitrogen are produced inside internal combustion engines and why therefore we tend to uh, add on catalytic converters to take care of the oxides of nitrogen by reacting them with unburned hydrocarbons to produce nitrogen gas. Early in the 20th century, this reaction was used in electric arcs to produce nitric oxide, which can then be oxidized further and reacted with water to give nitric acid. So it was one of the earliest ways in which nitrogen from the atmosphere was converted synthetically into a useful product, namely nitric acid. Nowadays, that reaction is no longer worked because the ammonia reaction is much more efficient, much less energy intensive, and produces ammonia, an equally valuable nitrogen product.